2022 can I get a motion to open the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. So voted. Um, this is a hearing regarding uh, PJ Keating. The hearing considered an appeal filed by PJ Keating Company, 72 South Main Street, the pushment of a cease and desist order issued by assistant health agent pursuant to GL 111-122-310 CMR 7.00 relative nu to nuisance holder from a hot mixed asphalt plant on, pro on the property. Any affected party has a right to appear, review, and consider matters presented. Votes may be taken. I will read out the violation that was issued on April 29th, 2022 regarding continuing Nuisance folder violations by BJ Keating Company, and it's stated to be dear Mr. Hill as a result of an olfactory inspection of the Quarry Act active activities on April 28, 2022. And today, I've nuisance folders caused by the operation of malfunctioning hot mix mixed asphalt plant. Could you lower your phones, please? Located in the quarry at 72 South Main Street, Krishna. The nuisance folders were observed in the vicinity of Fitch Street, Lawson Avenue, and South Main Street in this town. The HMA plant was operating during windy conditions with nuisance folders emanating from the quarry site going into Clifford Street, Lawson Avenue, South Main Street residents in the Akushnan Senior Center located at 59 South Main Street. The town received numerous complaints of odor on April 28th and that day, April 29th residents complaining of headache, nausea, dizziness, and a general fear of being outdoors. I responded to the complaint locations and formed olfactory observations. I was able to determine as a result of my observations that the nuisance odors are being generated by the malfunctioning HMA plant in the quarry located at 72 South Main Street. E.J. Keating was unable to control horrendous nuisance odors that permeated a broad area of the town last fall. 2022. Obviously, nothing was done over the winter months to repair the defective HMA emissions systems and prevent nuisance odor this year. These continuing nuisance odor conditions generated by PJ Keating Company is in violation of Mass DEP odor and does control regulations 310 CMR 7.09, which states new dust odor construction and demolition on no person having control of any dust or odor generating operations such as, but not limited to, asphalt batching plants, asphalt roofing materials, manufacturing plants, asphalt boring plants, foundries, chemical products, manufacturing plants, incinerators, fuel utilization facilities, petroleum products, manufacturing plants, aggregate manufacturing plants, food preparation and processing facilities, wood products, plants, dry cleaning establishments, paint and varnish, manufacturing plants, paper manufacturing plants, leather manufacturing plants, concrete batching plants, metal coating and treating plants, land clearing operations, construction work, dump operations, agricultural operations, and street sweeping shall permit emissions therefrom which cause or contribute to a condition of air pollution. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 111, Section 122 states that the Board of Health shall examine into all nuisances prevent or remove as the case may require. As a result, PJ Keating Company is hereby ordered to immediately cease and desist from all operation of the hot mix asphalt plant, immediately re remedy the cause of the nuisance odor conditions in order to prevent further nuisance conditions of the air pollution in the town of Akushnan. Failure to comply with this order subjects PJ Keating Company to MGL Chapter 111, Section 142B and may result in a complaint being filed in court fine being levied against you and are in prison. P.J. Keating Company has a right to hearing and any affected party has a right to appear at such hearing. A written request for such hearing must be received by the office within seven days of the receipt of this letter. If you have any questions in this matter, please feel free to contact the Board of Health. Regards, Patrick Hanning, Assistant Health Agent. <coughs> I'd like to turn the uh, mic over to uh, Attorney Jeff White. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as, as you indicated, um, my name is Jeffrey Blake. I'm here from KB Law, the uh, your town council. Um, and what I wanted to do, Mr. Chairman, is just so that when the board is 
listening to the evidence here tonight that they get an idea of what we're, of, of what we're dealing with. So um, uh, you've heard in this notice um, of nu nuisance over conditions. And uh, under the uh, layman's terms, a public nuisance is when someone's use of his or her or their property, in the case of a corporation, uh, affects the public that is an unacceptable detriment to the public's welfare. To the, uh, and under Chapter 111, Section 122, uh, there, it, was, it was quoted a little bit in your, in your notice, but the, the full section here is, the Board of Health shall examine into all nuisances, sources of filth, and causes of sickness within its town and or, or on board of, board of vessels within the harbor of such town, which may, in its opinion, be injurious to the public health, shall destroy, remove, or prevent the same as the case may require, and shall make great regulations for the public health and safety relative thereto. And it goes on to talk about infectious disease and the like that, that aren't here. But the, 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 the main one here is that <clears throat> uh, in the opinion of the board, may be injurious to the public health. So when you're listening to the to the testimony here tonight, I just wanted to give you that definition of, of nuisance. In due respect to uh, my other board members, if they have any comment at this point. I'll reserve comment to later. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Hannon. Hi, Mr. Chairman. I have an exhibit that I'd like to turn over to you. Um, these are the complaints that I downloaded off of the PJ Keating portal and some other documents from the Board of Health. Those have been supplied to counsel for PJ Keating. And we'll put that if we could get that marked as an exhibit. Exhibit 1A. What are you going to mark? Exhibit one or one? Why don't we mark it? Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Wait just one second. You get the idea. Turn that back over to Pat. Okay, so <clears throat> to get started, um, as you know, Mr. Chairman, I work 19 hours a week for the Board of Health, and my, my main assignment is to um, inspect PJ Keating and respond to complaints. So um, the asphalt plant was closed when I was first hired in July of 2020 and opened, I believe, in the fall of 21 job. Yeah, uh, possibly October, late September of 21. And we immediately started receiving um, what I would call strong uh, complaints of open. And um, Dave DeRoche was the chairman of the Board of Selectmen and was the chairman of the Soil Board at the time. And uh, took an interest in the complaints and actually came out on, on some of the complaints. And one that comes to mind is a complaint of Dalton Street that's in the exhibit um, for Diane Abrams. And it was unbearable. Uh, our eyes were watering. We were getting dizzy. Our nose were burning. And I'm um, standing there. A representative from PJ Keating said it wasn't that bad. And that's been my experience, Mr. Chairman, is that on most of the complaints that you have in that exhibit, Keating continually goes to the residences and tells the resident that they either don't smell it, that they're being, um, they're, that they're not telling them the truth, that they're not being reasonable. Um, so I would ask that you uh, inquire of some of the residents that came here tonight um, that have made complaints and get the story from them. You can do it, but uh, we, we're going to ask him some questions. Okay. Mr. Mr. Hannon, the board can ask questions and I have a couple of questions. Okay. So, um, did you, fellow board members, would like to ask Mr. Hannon anything at this time? I want to turn it over to the uh, yeah. attorney Blake. <clears throat> the way it should work is that we'll, we'll ask the questions, and then, of course, you get an opportunity to ask questions as well. Uh, Mr. Hannon, 
And you say that um, that you went out personally and observed the conditions. I don't know if observed is, is the correct word because you're, you're smelling. Um, but you, you, you smell. Um, and you said that your eyes watered? Yes. Okay, and can you explain to the board where you were when you when you smelled these? I was, I, uh, in this instance, where it was that bad, I was at the corner of Dalton Street and Pembroke Street. Okay, and, and did you observe the plant actually operating at that point? Yes, it was. We had actually, um, Mr. DeRoche and I had gone to the plant originally, and um, there really wasn't any odor at the plant, and, and when I know where Dave lives, and I knew that he had to drive down Pembroke Street to get to the plant. I left town hall with my town vehicle to get to Keating's Pit and use Pembroke Street myself. I put my windows down coming through the neighborhood and realized that it stopped. So I called um, Selectman DeRoche and asked him to be sure to come down Pembroke Street on the way so that he could smell it. So but but he's not here, so can we just, All right. what, what, your, what your observations are? Right, so, um, I decided that we would leave PJ Keating's location and go back to Dalton Street where I had smelled the odor, you know, just minutes earlier. Yeah. So myself, um, Rob Robinson, Rick Paveo, am I getting that right? Paveo. Uh, Mr. Paveo, and I believe another gentleman from uh, PJ Keating that said he was a manager of something um, went over to Dalton Street. Okay. And, and, and you could still smell it? And when I got out of the car, it was, it was horrendous. Well, what's the frequency? And when I, when I mean that, how, how long was the smell uh, we, observable? We were there uh, longer than 15 minutes, and it was, it was observable the entire time. Okay. And, and I was dizzy for probably a good half an hour after I left the site. You were dizzy? Yes. Okay. And, and uh, were there other complaints that you, that you smelled other than this? Oh, yes. Um, I had occasion to go to... Um, Mr. Shestack's house, I, I don't know what street it was on, but it's in, in a complaint here. And um, he had made a few complaints through the, through the portal. Um, I got a call from Mr. Shestack telling me that Mr. Pavo from PJ Keene was on the way over to his residence, so I zipped over there from town hall. And um, it did smell, but it wasn't as bad as, as Dalton Street. And um, while we were there, there was a discussion between Mr. Pavo and Mr. Shestack. And Mr. Shestack had complained the day before as well, that he couldn't sit up in his yard, he couldn't enjoy himself. Okay, is Mr. Shestack going to testify here today? He will have, okay. not, he's not here tonight. He's not here tonight. He sent me a text, he's got to work late. Okay. So, long story short, it was Mr. Pavo, Mr. Pavo told Mr. Shestack that he thought he was a reasonable person when he met him the day before. But now that he's got a second complaint, he doesn't think he's a reasonable person. And that was going to turn into um, a, a breach of peace. So did she stack within the house? Did, did you let Keating know, uh, did Keating know that, 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 that there was an issue? Yes, sir. I was right there with the Keating representative. Did, did they tell you what they thought the issue was? They couldn't smell it. They couldn't smell it. So they just denied any yes. and, and that's a that's a pretty common occurrence in all of these older complaints is that he goes out and says we didn't smell anything. And um, we do, they do. Um, people are at the point that they don't want um, PJ Keating coming to their properties anymore because they feel they're being called liars and being consulted. Sure. Well, with respect to you, have you, have you had any training from DEP or others uh, to detect odor? So, um, in, in the fall of 21, um, Joe and I were getting frustrated with what was going on. Joe, Joe Korea, for, Joe Korea, for the record, Joe Korea, my, the health agent. My supervisor. And um, I contacted, and I don't know Dan's last name from DEP, but he was from the air unit. And he explained to us about uh, detecting nuisance odor. And he and another um, associate from DEP came out, and uh, myself and Joe, and they, um, basically gave us a field training in how to detect um, nuisance odor. Unfortunately, the day that we were there, the wind was blowing um, straight back to the east. And there are, there are no houses that are affected straight back to the east. This is a, a north wind or, or south wind. Um, so they couldn't do anything. And I... Um, so your training? We, we took our training and, uh, you know, it's a one to seven scale on, on seriousness. 
um, anything above a four would be considered a nuisance. I would say that, you know, Mr. Shestex, for me, was a four. I would say that for Miss um, Abrams, it was a seven all day long. Um, well, when you say all day long, you were there for 15. Well, for the time I was there, it, yeah. was, it, was, a, it was a seven. If there was a 10 available, it would have been a 10. Okay. Okay. I have nothing further. This Yes, I would. They didn't give us enough mics to die. Mr. Hamm, what would you say is the typical time lapse between a complaint coming in and you getting there on days that you're available? Obviously, if a complaint comes in and you're not even on the job in that home. I'd, I'd be guessing. Um, <coughs> I know it's even, even if I'm at the conservation office, I still need to well do that. Um, some of it's within five minutes, some of it might be an hour later. Okay. And, and some of the complaints are, are fleeting, what does I call them? You know, fleeting over here for five minutes. Yep. Um, and then maybe ten minutes later, you know, comes back again. But in, in the case of uh, Ms. Abrams' house, that was just a you know, full full on assault of just stink. Would you like me at the podium, Mr. Chair? Uh, or, yes, please, that way, sure. everybody. Absolutely. And I just want to make a note that we're going to keep it specific to Boulder, and that's what this hearing is all about. It's not about anything else. It's specifically about this complaint and that violation and the odor that was witnessed at the time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the record, Luke Legere, Gregor Legere, and Stevens. I represent PJ Heating Company. Uh, just a couple of quick questions, Mr. Hannon. Um, you made a couple of references there to heating, saying that you can sit and smell anything um, when they come out. Who exactly um, are you referring to when you say heating? So in the case of uh, Dalton Street at Pembroke, it was Rob Robinson, um, Mr. Pablo, and another gentleman, <coughs> I believe, another gentleman who didn't get his name. From PJP. And were there other, I think you mentioned it's sort of a recurring theme. Uh, is it always those same two or three gentlemen? No, in the case of uh, Mr. Shestak's uh, complaint, um, it was only Mr. Pablo and another gentleman you know, wearing a white t shirt that said he was a manager of something at Keating and, and didn't give us his name. And um, you mentioned you mentioned a couple times a complaint by I think it was Miss Abrams, um, and was that the complaint at the corner of Dalton and Pembroke that you were describing? Yes, it was. What was the date of that complaint? I don't have that in front of me. It's in the package so. Yeah. so that complaint was filed through the portal. Here, did it, did it. I'm not sure I, because I, you know, maybe back I drove by and detected it. Well, if you, yeah. I don't think the portal was doing it that time. It was just through the board of health. I think it cost. I don't remember if the portal was in the field. Yeah, I, so my recollection is, is that we were standing out in front of Ms. Abrams' house, um, smelling the odor. She saw us and came out and, and talked to us. I think that's exactly what happened. So it wasn't a complaint. On the portal there, we smelled the driver by on the way to the meeting at 72 South Main Street. The meeting at 72 South Main Street, I'm sorry, was just a, a site inspection? Nope, it was a pre arranged meeting uh, about a. Um, I don't know who set the meeting up. I, I, I attended with Dave DeRoche. He may have set the meeting up with Rob Robinson, I'm not sure. Okay. I don't have any further questions. Sure. So right now we can we can go to residents uh, comments.
there's anybody that would like to get up and speak, you can go to the podium. I have, I have a list of names here, and the first one on the list is Christine D'Souza. You know what? It's Christian. 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 We should have sworn in that one. And, um, I will I'll swear. Hold on a second. Mr. Hannon, can you stand up and put your hand in the air? Do you swear that the testimony that you just gave is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay. And anybody in the audience that's going to testify here today, could you stand? Put your right hand in the air. I don't think you would. <laughs> do, do, I'm going to mask for you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. So everybody's been sworn. So, so I do have a list, and um, Christine D'Souza. Chris K. Chris K. Chris K. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. If you want to get up and speak, you're the first one on the list. You can go up to the podium. Christian D'Souza, 46, Oregon Avenue. I'm here to voice my opposition to um, suspending the cease and desist order. This has been a recurring issue in this town for the residents surrounding this facility, and it is still ongoing. I believe I filed a complaint as recently as last week, one day. When this facility is operating that Omnix asphalt plant in wind, atmospheres in the right direction, I can literally see the emissions wafting through my neighborhood. How, when, when my rights to breathe clean air going to be respected in this town? Uh, I mean, there are moments when I can't even sit at 9 o'clock in the morning and have a coffee on my deck, and I'm two blocks away to the south from this facility. I mean, how, how long are we going to let this go on? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, you know. I mean, when I'm out there in the yard trying to get things done, and, and I'm being bothered by these emissions from the, from the hot mix asphalt plant, you know, my nose is getting irritated, my throat is getting sore. I, I got to go in the house. To, to recover. I, I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and this is all coming to, you know, uh, my attention because I have a lot more time to be on my property now. And now I'm really getting to see what my wife has told me in the past when this emissions are uh, bombarding the area. It is, it's unfair, it's unjust. If, if I was to, uh, Put this on a scale of one to seven, I'd say at the minimum it's a four and it's been a seven at times. If you review all the records, you'll see multiple complaints that I've filed. I have no ulterior uh, agenda. I'm here to protect the health and welfare of my family. That's my priority. And, and I'm not going to stop. Good, good evening, sir. You know, I'm Dr. Blake. I think we've seen, we've seen each other before at a couple of other meetings. Sir, I, I've got a couple of questions. You, you say that your, your eyes water or your nose burns? Absolutely, yes. At, at some points, that's correct. And how, how often does this happen? Well, it, it, again, conditions are a big factor. But, I mean, if it's not my side of the, of the quarry, it's the other side of the quarry. When the machine is operating, those emissions are going somewhere, and the people are being affected. But you know, if I gave, I couldn't give you uh, how how often how often is the plant running? I mean, isn't it a season? It's under a cease and desist right now. It, it is, but, but but that cease and desist is being appealed. Right? I understand. So, that. so this is why we're here. Right. And I, what I I'm trying to understand it. is is nuisance conditions. Something that happens once for ten minutes is not a nuisance. No, so it's, that's why my question. And so again, you have I I filed a complaint immediately on the portal every time the records are there. 
the record today. The record today, today but, but you're here justifying, and I'm, I'm just asking you a couple of questions. Okay. How often is it? Is it once a week? Oh no, no, it could be. It could be a couple, few times a week. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And, and when this odor comes toward you and you smell it, it does it go inside your house? Oh, it does. If the windows are open, absolutely. And when I have to retrieve, I have to go in the house and close everything up tight because just to be able to recuperate from the from the you know the uh, throat. Uh, soreness or nasal, but it, you know. And, and how long does it last? Is it five minutes? Is it? No, an hour? Well, I mean, I might, you know, if, if the air in the house is uh, decent, within a half hour or so, maybe I can, you know. No, but I'm talking about outside. Outside, oh, no, if, if, if they're operating, it's it's nonstop. Okay. And during through the course of the day, typically in the morning. You know, eight nine o'clock in the morning, we want to sit on the deck and enjoy the weather. We'll have a cup of coffee, and it's atrocious. It's just it, it, that's when generally it starts to be uh, an issue. Absolutely. It, 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 since, this, since this year, this season, since that asphalt started flame started running, how many times would you estimate that you've that you've experienced this intense odor? I would say at least a few times a week. So. But again, it always depends on the conditions. On the, on the wind? Exactly. Absolutely. It is, absolutely. It's the, the, the wind. That's correct. All right. Well, would you say that it interferes with the enjoyment of your property? Yes. I can't, I can't, I can't even use my property. I mean, it's, it's, if this continues, my property is going to be useless. And everyone else that surrounds that facility, if they're allowed to increase the, the uh, production, how, how, long, have, how long have you been there? 28, 27 years. Okay. So, so prior to the, the asphalt plant being moved out front, did you ever experience these conditions? Some, somewhat in, in, in the past, since since Keating uh, took over that property. So, so I'd say the past 20 years. So you, you, you said somewhat. Yes. Now, when, when, the, when the asphalt plant was in the back, you, you've told me that it's a couple of times a week you're getting this issue now. When it was in the back, how many times a week did you get it? No, it wasn't, it wasn't that often, but it was still, again, depending on the, the wind. Was the odor as intense? It had. It did. It, it, if the atmosphere was correct, it had some pretty bad. Did yeah. your nose and eyes, did your, you know, it was, your it eyes was I mean, when, when the pressure, the atmospheric pressure or humidity or whatever was correct, those emissions didn't move at all. They just sat there around the neighborhood. I mean, literally, you could see the emissions. All right, and, and you you complained, and, and we and we've got your complaints on the floor. Okay. All right, I, I have. Them. Mr. Chen, could I just ask? Him? Yep. Go ahead. <coughs> Christian uh, Keating goes out. Uh, a Keating representative goes out for all of the uh, odor complaints. And I know that Keating representatives have been to your property. Have they asked you not to complain to the town, to only contact them? Yes. And did they tell you why? Not really, no. Okay. Not, not so much, no. Just, uh, you know, if there was an issue, you know, you don't have to call. Don't let notify them. the town. You can just call us directly. Okay. Thank you. This is the Sulu. You live on Lawson Avenue? Laura Keene. Laura Keene. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's like it's like two blocks. Well, if you count rivet, I guess three. So what would you say the distance? I know approximate distance might change from, from one from where it is now? Yeah. Eighty thousand feet maybe? I I I'd have to look at a top graph, so I mean I I can never really did they move it a thousand feet closer to your house? Some people, the new plant location ends up right on their front. Oh, I know, I understand. Others, it may have moved away a little bit, but in most Brandy, cases, yeah, it's closer. I so, believe so. I do. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? If I may, just a couple of really quick questions. How, where would you like me to ask? That's fine. Okay. Can you hear me okay, Mr. D'Souza? Um, so just a couple of really quick questions. 
Um, you mentioned a moment ago that someone from Keating has told you not to contact the town. Who was that, sir? One of your uh, one of your employees, one of your employees. Okay. I don't recall. There's been a few occasions when the heating employees visited my property after I made the complaint, and um, it was always the same memo. We don't smell anything. We don't smell anything. And my frustration, I'm not taking down names. Okay, I'm not because I really don't want to speak with anyone at that point because again I'm concerned about the health and welfare of my family thank you sir just one other question are there any homes between your property and the quarry property any what any other residences any other homes yes multiple multiple yeah. do you know how many offhand I'm not an engineer, I haven't surveyed the neighborhood. So. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. I don't have any further yeah. questions. Okay. Anything else? No, no. I oh, okay. Okay. opinion. That's All right. Thank you, Mr. Pacino. Right. Okay. I'm going to uh, ask if uh, Deborah Polchepec is here. Hi, can you hear me? Could yeah. you spell the name of the record? P-O-L-C-H-L-O-P-E-K. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, can, can you do that again? The, the, the steno was... Um, I'm talking too fast, sorry. P-O-L-C-H-L-O-P-E-K. HAPS, as an example means, HAPS, along with National Ambient Air Quality Standards. The air quality is unsafe. Who's responsible for monitoring and enforcing this? I've looked alongside the PGK for 25 years. I am 375 feet from the location of the asphalt plant. Although the move was approved when Mass CDP, the very clear response was, I will quote, this plan approval does not negate the responsibility of the permitting to comply with any other federal, state, and local laws or regulations now or in the future. They are open and operating without proper permits. A pond was filled in and the tanks were placed, along with other issues that did not meet the construction control law. My mother lives, 70, who lives two houses away from me is 78 years old and is an oxygen dependent. My father died four years ago from lung cancer. I'm, I reside at 38 Clifford, they're at 26 Clifford. Re remember that we need to stay to the yep. other. In the past, I have made numerous complaints about excessive dust and voices my concerns to PJT, and they always say some excuse that water truck is broken and about it's happening. They're going to do a better job. Through the years, many plant managers, public relations employees have failed because they negligently failed to properly maintain and operate the facility. Property has deteriorated due to lack of silica dust. Their reputation speaks for itself. In 25 years, I have never been able to complain about the asphalt odor until okay, so the relocation. The order, please. Okay. I'll, I'll stop in the. the uh, Top of that. In 25 years, I've never complained about the odor until the relocation of the asphalt plant. The odor is defensively strong and pungent. I become dizzy. My eyes are watering. My sinuses are irritated. I feel like I want to vomit. I don't understand the oversight of this operation and how this can be happening in this day and age. I'm afraid it's not only me, but my oxygen dependent mother was fearful to open up her doors and windows at 78 years old to let her dog out. It's disgusting. I'm fearful of an accident with flammable materials. The history of compliance 
with federal, state, and town bylaws to follow those standards. With PJ Gaming, again, reputation. They ignore the laws, they feel they're above all the safety regulations that have been put into place to protect the health, safety of our community. Along with the destruction of our wetlands, again, reputation. Their reckless operations are interfering with the use of our properties and endangering our health. We're becoming more fearful every day. They open and operate without proper permits. Oversight of this operation is unsatisfactory. Why does so much notice have to be given for our town inspectors and to PJ Key when they've not even fixed past violations? <laughs> They're laughing in our face while they poison our beautiful town. The enforcement that was needed yesterday is poisoning us now, today. The operation of a uh, PJ Keaton asphalt plant is contrary to the best interests of the town. The end. Ma'am, as, as you know, my name is Jeffrey Blake. And I, I'm not sure that you testified regarding odor complaints. Or what can you use? I did say what the odor is doing to me, right? You, 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 yeah, for like uh, one sentence of, of, of 500. Um, but what, what my point here is, I, we're trying to get to this, to the odor. You live 375 feet from the asphalt. Correct. Do you live near the prior witness? Uh, on the same side because I'm trying to. The same to side, yes, so, correct. So when the wind blows a certain correct. way, you get the odor. Correct. You heard him describe the odor. You you described it as making your eyes water, making you dizzy and want to vomit. Correct. How often does this condition exist at your property? At least two to three times a week. Okay. So it depends upon wind conditions. Is it during, when the plant is running? I don't know when they operate, are they, you know. Okay. There's no telling when. Right. And, and how long have you lived there? 25, 25 years. Okay. And, and has it always been like that, or is this new? This is new since they moved the plant. Okay. Like I said, the plant used to be in the bag. I, I never made a complaint. Once in a while, I was working two jobs at the time I was hired to live on the property. Sure. Okay? Sure. On a few occasions, I'd smell it and drive away because I, you know, like I said, I worked two jobs, so I wasn't there. And it was a small plant. And, and does it prevent you from enjoying your property? Of course it does. I mean, not am I able to go outside and sit outside, but you can't breathe out there. I get dizzy. I try to sit outside, and the odor is so bad at times, you can't sit out there. Your nose is burning. Your eyes are watering. You can't breathe. You feel like you want to throw up. You start getting dizzy. You're going to go in a house, and then I'm going to make sure everything's closed up in the house because if a gust comes through, that's it. Then my phone's ringing because my mother's panicked because she's smelling it. And she let, just let the dog out. She don't want to open up the door and let the dog back in the house. Because she's afraid to the smell and she's on oxygen. Okay. I have a question. <clears throat> how, how did you establish 375 feet? That was in the documents provided by the town. Do you know what it was before? No, I don't. <coughs> was it thousand I couldn't see it. Now it's almost my face. I, I don't know. I don't know where, where it was before. <coughs> to be honest with you, it was way back at the point. Quite a distance. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, anybody have any other questions? Uh, Deb, same question. When PJ Keating representatives come to your house, do they ask you not to call the town complain to the town? Yes, they did. All right, thank you. And it was Mr. Christopher Hopkins that was the last one who came out that I said I don't want them coming out to my property anymore because all they do is irritate me even more than what I already am, and I, I don't want to deal with them. Yes, Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Mr. Hopkins came and he said, uh, "Hey, I'm a new kid on the block there because it's been 50 of them because I know who the stranger was walking down the driveway, and uh, then he wanted me to start explaining the whole story and I." Couldn't even catch my breath. It was nasty breathing out there. I said, I, I don't want you people coming. I'm not explaining to another whole other person that's in the game now. I just explained it too many times, and uh, I, I don't want to deal with you. And he said, Well, you can always call us. I said, No, I call the town because I'm 
all set with this. I, I had so many broken promises through the years with this company, and uh, you know, history is just going to repeat itself. So I'm good. One last question, please. Um, when you have called in complaints, I've asked you to use the portal um, so that he gets a copy of the complaint, but you've insisted that you don't like using the portal because he can come to your house anyway, even though you're right on the complaint. Correct. I read you know, do not come to my property. But they come in. And they came anyways. All right. Thank you. I can show you a Deborah, you mentioned your mom. Yep. Um, how old is she? 78. On our stand. And she lives by herself. Yep. Obviously, she's not um, in a position to be complaining or calling or doing a portal. Right. She has a jet about the phone, so she's not. Do you know any others that are living in your neighborhood nearby that just don't want to get involved because they don't, you know, they're afraid to come forward? Out of retribution, or, or just uh, you know, just they don't want to be in the limelight. There, I spoke to numerous residents in the area by the town meeting, and there are a number of elderly residents that are fearful and do not want to come forward. Thank you. And your house was the end of life on vacation, right? Yep, I was away, and uh, I believe the Saturday before the town meeting, my. Uh, it was asphalt thrown all on my property and on my deck and at my house. I have been through this before. I don't know if it fell from the sky or somebody threw it or whatever, but it was there. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. Um, Mr. Thomas, Douglas Thomas. <clears throat> Douglas Thomas, 25 South Main Street. Talk about daily, living daily, or getting by daily with the smell, the dust. Uh, we live directly on South Main Street, roughly a quarter of a mile. Uh, not only the owner, the dust from the facility, now it has been moved to the roadway directly across from the senior side. How dare we? How dare we allow this in our town? We live on the second floor. The smell invades our two story home. We thought we could enjoy summer with opening the windows and not having to run air conditioners, which we've had to replace in the past because of the dust, the silica in the air. The, du the dust, the, the odor that comes from these trucks daily is horrible. It's like being trapped inside of an oven, inside of our home. We have to shut the windows. Roughly 7, 7.30 in the morning it begins. Whatever time of night they decide to stop making and producing asphalt. Again, the odor, uh, our eyes burn, water, our throats hurt. We breathe that daily. Literally, the trucks are underneath our homes of our windows. Again, I live directly on South Main Street. I, I think uh, with what PJ has done, by putting this asphalt manufacturing facility to the front of the roadway was the biggest mistake in history that this company could have ever made. They have rubbed it in the residence of a cushion. My opinion, and in my opinion only, they're destroying this community. The people that have to endure the daily smell, the dust, and the noise from this facility is horrible. I'm truly ashamed at this point to call Cushion the place to be because it used to be the place to be. The odor is driving people out of this community. People drive into a Cushion and they see this brand new manufacturing facility, roughly 300 seats 
so feet from the roadway? What kind of a representation is this to our community that we've allowed this facility to abuse this community and the people that reside here from the odor, the dust, and the noise? We cannot enjoy life in our yard, on our deck, barbecue with our families during the summer because of this horrific smell. I, I feel like we've traveled a thousand miles in the work that we've done as a community action works. We've taken steps forward, but I don't feel like things are being enforced. Yes, we can slap cease and desist orders on this company. We feel like we're being ignored as residents for the quality of life that we should be enjoying. What happened to the injunction? Why isn't this being done? The quality of life? We're not getting that here in Acushnet. Unfortunately. I would like to see things done in public, openly, in meetings, keeping the town, the town residents informed as we ask. We can all sit here and complain about the odor and dust as we have for years. We feel that nothing is being done. I rest my case. Good evening, sir. As you know, I'm Jeff Blake from Town Council. And I think I've seen you at a, a, a number of times. Yes. But I, but I do want to, I, I think your testimony uh, kind of hit on all the high points, but I just want to make sure. You said that you can smell the odor daily? Daily. Okay. And number one, Jeff, and why I can say that, I can touch on that, is because of the transportation of the asphalt that goes through South Main Street of Cushion with these trucks that are hauling with, we'll call them, they believe coverings on these trucks, okay? Um, they're rags, okay? I know there are standards to this operation for them covering these loads of asphalt with a particular target that's supposed to reduce the emissions that are are released into the air. So, so your 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 odor, the odor that you smell, isn't dependent upon weather conditions. The, the prior two speakers, prior two witnesses here, talked about if the wind is right. Are you saying yeah, that the wind blows in my house too? I live roughly a quarter of a mile from the facility. Not only does it come from the facility, from the exhale of the facility, it's coming from the trucks. We're being exasperated two times over. All right, and. and and, and you have, you've observed the facility running when you... Yes, sir. I've actually taken the pictures. So, and I've submitted those pictures. So, which would the asphalt operating while it's supposed to be on a cease and desist? So, the daily odor, what's the frequency, what's the duration, I guess I should say, of this odor? Is it 15 minutes every time a truck goes by, or is it all day long? Again, Jeff, it depends on the amount of, of asphalt production and producing that day. It could be one truck every five minutes. It could be six trucks every ten minutes. But, but the odor, the, the, the odor, odor, again, it depends upon weather conditions, which way the wind is blowing, how low the ceiling is. We don't predict the weather. We, again, we have residents throughout the community that are complaining, that have never complained before in this community because the asphalt facility is at the front of the roadway. We, we didn't complain when the facility was in the back of the plant. Since they moved it to the front of the plant, as we know, the phone lines have blown up with complaints. So, so, so what I'm trying to get at is, I, I, I understand that you're upset. I 100% I, I get it, but what I'm- Jeff, I'm being honest and I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated that the town is not doing something. The members that are sitting here are unable to enforce anything. So the, the way this works is we issue a cease and desist. They get an opportunity to that, a notice and an opportunity to be heard. 
This is their opportunity to be heard. And this is our opportunity to present this to this board. But my questions for you are, what I'm trying to nail down is a nuisance, as I told a, a previous witness, a nuisance, an, an order for, for 10 minutes once every six months isn't a nuisance. I'm trying to understand through you and these other witnesses, number one, the duration. Does it smell all day long? Yes, it does. Okay. Frequency. Does it smell once every six months or does it smell daily? Again, it's dependent on operations there. Okay. If, if they're in full operation, it's daily. It's throughout the day from 7.30 in the morning till 5, 6 o'clock at night. Does the, does the odor go away when the plant shuts no. down? I mean, yes, it does. It does. It does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're able to hold up our windows. All right. You can observe the plant shutting down so you know it's going to stop. The odor is going to stop. Yes. Okay. All right. I don't have any food. And just one question. Um, you stated that uh, it didn't. You didn't have the odor when the plant was in the back. Once in a blue moon, depending upon the weather, which way the wind was blowing. But okay. it was a rare. But you're stating that it's from the vehicles, from the trucks. Not only from the trucks. Well, you specifically said it was from the trucks. I, I see it both. We're getting it. I said I believe double whammy from not only the facility but the trucks. I believe what I stated. No, I'm just trying to get get it so that we where you know the odor is emanating from the plant being moved to the front. So that was my question. So I would emphasize that again. We need double whammy not only from the facility that produces the asphalt, but we're getting it from the vehicles that haul it. Cool, not cool. So, uh, Doug, you say you're a quarter mile from the new plant. Yes. Any idea what you are from where the old plant was? Roughly, I believe the old manufacturing facility was roughly a mile in the back of the plant. Roughly from my coming to all these meetings the last few years. From your testimony, it seems to me that if they moved the plant, half a mile or quarter mile, I don't know what the distance is, from the rear to the front, they took away all that time, a truck might dissipate, so I smell. Absolutely. 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 Maybe Mr. Legere or somebody else could speak to this, but you know, how long does it take for odors to dissipate from the truck? Right, you have to ask, ask all the producer in the facility, I believe it comes out of the facility at 4,000 degrees, I used to haul asphalt. I used to labor asphalt. I know the business. So that's something I'd like the PJK to respond to if they could. Try and understand the correlation between a truck getting asphalt loaded into it, way in the back, and how long, because it seems to me there's, there's a consistency here of that versus a truck being loaded in the front of the facility and then hitting the roads fresh rather than driving all that distance. So Dave, I, I've done some research on that. I, I have some information for that. If you could. So um, on, on inspection, I don't know the date that I was there. Um, I was parked by an LNS concrete and I was watching a truck load in the, um, in, the, in the loading bay under the asphalt silos. And <coughs> the way the asphalt silos work, the truck pulls, pulls in, it makes one drop, the truck pulls up a little more and makes another drop. By the time the silo was putting the last drop into the, to the back of the dump body, the truck was outside of the loading facility. And in their, in their air permit, um, it says that they have a containment um, system to contain um, volatile organic compounds and semi-volatile organic compounds coming off the hot asphalt. And I looked at their air permit today and they claimed that they were covering either 70% of those fumes or 90%. I watched um, the fumes pouring off of the truck that came outside of the bay to be looked And then I watched the truck sit there before he put his canvas on and, and the fumes are just pouring off the top of the truck. The truck left the facility. I followed the truck out of the facility. And I have a video of this um, that I have in my given to the um, World Health Yet. But I followed the truck down the highway 
And when the truck um, gets about to the council on aging, it's reached the speed that the canvas that the driver has covered this hot asphalt is blowing in the wind. And all the fumes are just coming off the back of the truck. Um, a resident um, spent some time of, of roughly two weeks um, sitting across from the gate for PJT and taking pictures of the trucks leaving. And two of the pictures he sent me um, had a different kind of canvas um, set up on it. So that when the truck uh, got loaded with asphalt, a bar came down on the canvas at the front of the down body, and another bar came down at the back and holds the canvas tight down against the asphalt, and, and almost no fumes come off of that truck as it drives down the highway. It's my feeling that keying is um, loading trucks that aren't equipped properly to haul pop mix asphalt. Um, the asphalt plant was at the back, quite some distance away. When the asphalt comes out of the silo, um, I think it's in the 300 degree range, I'm, I'm guessing. And it has time to cool off, or had time to cool off significantly from the rear of the property to the front. And um, there was a lot of time allowed for that. And now they're driving down South Main Street, and it's, it's hot, it's right out of the silo, and the vaults are coming out of the truck. The, I have um, <coughs> mentioned there are hot mix covers, and there, are, there are other things that Key could do to eliminate this nuisance. Key is barely operating at, at the permitted uh, level right now. Their permit is for a million tons a year. And if you compress a million tons a year into the operating season, um, that's, a, that's a parade of asphalt trucks with fumes coming off of them if they're not <coughs> properly. So Mr. Thomas is right. He's being affected by trucks that don't have the right equipment, as far as that order goes. And on days that the wind is blowing um, to the south, he's affected by that as well. And, and one other thing, some of these trucks that do haul the asphalt, okay, they are putting bodies to keep that asphalt hot until they get to their location. Again, I know because I've worked in the industry, I'm very familiar with asphalt, the equipment, every aspect of asphalt. I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but I know. I've done, I've done my homework, I've done my share of hauling asphalt, laying asphalt, rolling it. I, I just think that we really need to take a stand and do what's right for the residents in this community. And that's just what I'm asking for the odor and the dust. So, so Doug, you and I have a lot of contact while you've been out um, watching these trucks. Would you agree with me that as the as the trucks are going down South Main Street, that the canvas is flapping in the wind? Absolutely. And you can see the fumes coming out of the back. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. So do you do you know any of your neighbors that are affected by the, the fumes and you just don't want to be heard that you're afraid of coming out? Uh, I know of one particular. Uh, I have some feeling on it, I wish not to touch on it, but I know one um, very ill from what we think is possibly, potentially, could be related to this asphalt industry. Um, I've asked this person actually to um, consult with their, uh, their doctors on this. Um, this person was doing very well when the asphalt uh, business was closed there for a couple of years. All of a sudden, uh, there has been a spike in this person's health and not doing well. Uh, I can't say 100% it is linked to this business, but we all have guts. We have gut feelings. And that's my gut that's my feeling. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Thomas, just a couple of questions. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, have you submitted any complaints through the portal? Uh, like? One time. And the one time I did, not even sure of the date, I did have a visit from PJP. Again, they visited the property. I felt intimidated. 
I felt that I was being called a liar. They had no longer invited to my property. I could direct all my complaints directly to the Board of Health Cloud because I feel nothing is being done to the PJP. Do you know the names of the jet people, person or people who visited your property? I, I do not. Um, you mentioned, sir, that you had taken some photographs that you said, I think you said you submitted photographs? I had one photograph that I had taken, and it was coming down South Main Street from Town Hall towards Fairhaven, and it was actually put onto a flyer, and that flyer I was standing out front here, handing out the effects of the asphalt facility. I was the one that was standing out here. I was the one that shot that photograph. On a day that they said they weren't operating, by the way. That's why I posted that picture. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Mr. Chair, may I just uh, add one other thing, please? Yes. Sorry, and this is just in response to Mr. Davino's question, which uh, Mr. Hannon answered. We didn't really have a chance. We have air modeling that we could submit to the board on that exact question. I think that would be far more beneficial than us trying to summarize the air modeling for you here tonight. So we just ask for an opportunity to submit that uh, after the meeting. That would be terrific. Um, would it be in layman's terms? Or would I have to be an air monitor expert to decipher? Yeah, we can put together a synopsis that will do our best to put it in layman's terms. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. But yes, I just ask, uh, is the air modeling a model of another facility that's similar to this, or is it from actually from this facility? Yeah. Okay, you can you tell us when that was done? It was done, I believe, um, correct me if I'm wrong, as part of the DEP permitting process that was last year. Okay, because what I read in, in the air permit, the model was um, of a similar uh, facility and not the PJP facility that's having to mainstream. But maybe you have a different document that's actually from the site. Yeah, we'll submit. We'll submit what we. Have. All right, and and what I could I just ask that they submit the actual document itself so that our expert, Dr. Martin, can look at that. Yeah, yeah that's it. Right. Right. Yeah, that's what we offered. Yeah, we'll submit yeah. the document and we'll put yeah. together a synopsis to try to explain it, uh, so Dr. Martin doesn't necessarily have to explain. It. Mr. Gutierrez has a question for PJ Key. <coughs> Yes, sir. Is your blue, ga uh, blue gas treatment working in a plant on your new asphalt plant? Takes the smoke away when you open up the chute and dumps it in the truck. Is that is that blue black? Blue smoke. Blue, blue smoke uh, is sucked out of the body and into a chamber and filtered out. Is that working on the new asphalt plant? I see a yes back there. It is. Yeah. Yep. And it's maintained routine maintenance at least once a week. On the filters. Okay. So, so the boss, the boss question. Well, wait, 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 we test it, it runs continuously every day while the plant is running, and it's maintained once a week. Okay, all right, thank you. I'm just, I was just making sure, because I know the plant out in the back, a lot of times that, that was down, and, uh, and the blue smoke would just travel through the air. Um, but my concern is if that thing is not working, they could be getting uh, fumes and, and odors from that. So I'm just wondering if this thing is op operating with this new asphalt plant, which new asphalt plant should have it in it. Okay, I see all these heads going up and down, so I get to get a yes. So well, I just, yes. just to follow up on, on yeah, yeah, yes. okay. Mr. Medeiros' yes. question on an inspection of the plant and of the um, emission control system, when I mentioned the fact that the truck was being loaded outside of the bay, Another gentleman whose name escapes me that says he's the paving manager for all of their plants said that that could be addressed and that has not been addressed. 
and I still see trucks being loaded, um, with, you know, partial dump body and blue smoke coming off the truck outside of the bay. So I don't see how the collection system could collect it. And once again, I do have a video of that. Mr. Thomas, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Karen Bernard? That's me. Would like to speak? Well, I have questions. I don't yeah, know. Uh, my name is Karen Bernard, and I have to swear to. Yeah, yeah, yeah all that stuff. Okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you sworn in? No, I was going to swear in, but you should be up here, so I swear. <laughs> Well, were you here when everybody stood up? And yeah, but I didn't want to speak at the time. But he called my, he called me out, so I was going to. Well, you don't have to speak. Oh, Can you put your right hand in the air? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? <coughs> yes, I did. And again, you try to keep it to the older uh, complaints. Yes, correct, correct. <coughs> um, I live at number one South Main Street, first house in the Cushnet. I live at the intersection where the trucks have to slow down in order to either go through the intersection, whether they're going straight or whether they're going to the left to all the to Haven to the highway. Um, but they have to slow down in that area. So they're basically sitting in front of my home. And the netting, I guess it's called netting, is never, um, sometimes it's holy, it's torn, it's tattered, uh, it's flapping. It's, there's sometimes only one arm, and I understand there should be two. And there is just smoke emitting. I call them pig pen, like the cartoon from Schultz. Um, Schultz cartoon. But it, it just sits there. It just it stinks. And I don't sit out front. I just love to sit out front. I purchased my home. Don't tell me more because I'm not going to. I purchased, we purchased a home there because of the location. Because we have the, the cushion is the best of both worlds. You have the country, and then if you want to go to the highway, in four directions, you can the highway. Krishna is beautiful. It's a beautiful place to be. That's where we all go when we're kids for a ride to the country. There are uh, amazing companies throughout the town that do not disturb or bother anyone. Um, it's just a beautiful place to be. And this is upsetting because they're disrespectful. And not all truck drivers are doing this. Some of those trucks are beautiful and brand new and amazing. And they're running properly because I do understand that they are contractors. And I want to say that. But there are trucks that do not belong on the road at all. Um, they're speeding through town, and there are children standing on the side of the road. We need to speak to the odor. Well, this is the odor. This odor is being transported from DJ Keating to the front of my house where it sits. Okay. Until it decides where it's going. So it's affecting us all. Now, that smell goes from PJ Keating to my home. And it's just a shock, it's one road from town. So everybody on that road is smelling this asphalt. You can see it and you can smell it. And it sits there, and as the truck drive off, it lingers. And it stinks really bad. Have you always experienced this? Well, or is it since the plant was moved? Well, since the, the plant has moved, because now they're trucking things in. So now we have a, we have a, a double edged sword. Now they're driving everything in. This applies to driving them, on driving them out, which of you, you know, want to say. And it just smells. It just smells. They just, you know, sometimes we have a parade. Sometimes but, but my question is, it, was, was it like that when the plant was in the back? I've been here for four year, uh, five years. So okay. since I've been here, they've switched to the front. So this is all I've witnessed. Okay. So I'll be honest, I don't know previously. But I see this on a daily basis, and it does smell. And you can see the fumes coming off the trucks. And this is why I get excited about the children, because they're standing there waiting for the school bus, and these trucks are just sitting there and this stink is just surrounding them. And this is why I always say, worry about the kids, worry about the kids, everybody laughs at me. It's very important that you know that it's being, it's just being driven through our town and it interplayed even because they get on the highway and then they go from another town. But we get the majority of it because it's fresh and it's hot and it's steamy and it smells. So that's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. All right. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Diane Abrams. Um, I just want to tell everyone 
before someone asked how long I've lived here. My parents have owned this property for 80 years. I've lived there my entire life. <clears throat> when my parents bought this property, the only thing they had for owners was a chip farm next door, a pig farm up the street, and multiple bosses. And they knew the quarry was there, but at that time there was not an odor coming from the quarry that there is now. I'm a gardener, a farmer, and I like to spend a lot of time outdoors. And I have a two-year-old granddaughter that I take care of. And at times I can't even go in the yard because the odor is so bad. Burns my eyes, burns my nose, and my two-year-old granddaughter can't tell me what's going on. J.P. Keene, three men from there, and three people from the town came to the corner of Pembroke and Dalton Street. I can't remember the exact time. And I saw them, so I went outside, and I said to them, this horror, this odor is horrible. I said, I can't be outside, it's not healthy, I'm in the healthcare profession, and I kept in seeing what is in asphalt, which isn't good for anyone. I can't remember the gentleman's names that came from Keaton, but the gentleman said to me, oh, I don't know, I don't smell anything, I have my grandson come on with me. And I, at that time, said to him, I'm glad for you, I'm glad you let your grandson do this. However, I don't like, want my granddaughter smelling this. The smell is horrible, and I'm not a complainer, I don't complain about the quarry, but I do complain about the odor. It is horrible, when it's out back, there wasn't a problem. I'd say that plant out back was more like a mile and a half. I used to ride horses back there many years ago. So I think the biggest problem now is the fact that they move the plant to the front, where it's very residential. The odor is horrible. And I can't say, I, I don't go out every single day, every time, every morning, every night, but at least four or five times every morning, the odor is really bad. And my neighbors have said the same thing. They say, you know, I put a complaint to the town, I've done this. I said, well, come to the meeting. Oh, I'm afraid I'll get involved. Well, I think this is still America, and this is still our right to speak. I'm not complaining, and I understand it's a business. Everyone has to have some kind of business to raise money. But I think this company needs to think more about the neighbors. Um, years ago, Tilcon was there, Warner Brothers was there. They were very good neighbors. If you had a complaint, they complied and did what you asked. It seems like it seems like there's deaf ears right now. And I understand they blew up the plant out back, so it's very difficult to put it back there. But I just think someone needs to really look at the consequences of moving this plant to the front. The odor is horrible. It burns my eyes. You can say it doesn't. The people that came to the property said, I don't smell anything. I told them, well, come to my house. I'll let you have to sleep there, live there for a week, and then you can tell me you don't smell anything. <coughs> I really meant that. I was very serious. I'll bring you a cookout. You can bring a cookout and cook in front of my house. So that's all I really have to say. I just think that there has to be a little more consideration for our community rather than just blowing us off. Good evening, man. As you know, I'm, I'm Jeff White from uh, your town council. I, I do have a, a couple of questions. I, I think you can probably guess what they are. Uh, you say that the, the odor uh, makes your eyes water, burns your nose, and throat. How often do you smell this odor? Um, at least four or five times a week. Okay. And it's usually in the morning hours, um, and sometimes in the early afternoon, but mostly in the morning. Does is it, when I smell it the most. Does it prevent you from using like your property? Oh, definitely. You have I'm, like I said, I'm a farmer, I'm a gardener, and I have a tough time. The only time I go out now and do it is later in the evening because I can breathe. I have no further questions. Any other questions? Still here? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Pat Nikaya. Hi. Look at 
and by South Bay Street, my driveway is Buddy Keating's driveway. So no one gets closer than me. And you can tell at 7 30 in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, you look out, the smoke is coming out of the stacks. It's the smell is there. Um, most of the time I just don't go outside unless I'm going shopping or something, going to get somebody. I don't go outside because I don't like the smell. It's horrible. It's every day. The trucks track it. The towels spill it. It's just horrendous. You can't go outside. Not to mention the truck noise. <laughs> you know, every single truck that comes out is able to find my house. Because my house is directly in front of it. That's all I have to say. Did you, uh, can you explain to us the difference between the plant in the back and the front and how your life changed? Oh, I didn't even know I had enough for a plant in the back until all of a sudden these big towels showed up in my doorway, practically. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Mr. Chair? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ken Hammond. <coughs> yes, I live uh, right alongside of the and uh, that smell is atrocious. A friend of mine was up the street with me, and I was telling him about it. He lives in Beverly, but he works up the street. And when he came over to my house, he said, Holy mackerel, now I see what you're talking about. So, I don't know, I don't know, I have to move the grass and all that. I have to get two and a half acres of it. I get the burning in the eyes, slight headaches. Same, same thing as everybody else is getting. Did you notice this when they moved the plant? Was it like that before? Without it. When the plane was in the back without it. So it's made a difference. Yep. And I can see that thing right there, seven o'clock. They go in. Notice Wednesdays, Saturdays, recently, it really stinking. And that's when I noticed more and more trucks coming out of it. So that's that's when they fire it up. Good evening, sir. As you, as you know, I, I'm Jeff Boyd. You, you sat through this. Um, you said you lived right next to somebody. Can you just give us the actual uh, address? 97 South Main Street. 97 South Main Street. About how far? I can't the drive. Oh, so you're here. You're, you're, <coughs> about how far? Estimate. 200 feet. 200 feet. Uh, rough estimate, maybe. 200 gas. Okay. And, 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 and how often are you smelling these two? Often enough. Uh, well, I mean, three, three, four days. A week? Depends, depends on the wind. That's, you know, all summer comes to me. So, yeah, and, and you know it's when the plant's running because you can see the plant? Well, I can smell it. Okay. And are you able to? I get up at my coffee, sit in the living room. And my living room is right there on the street. And I can smell it. You can smell and it inside your house? Smell. Huh? You can smell it inside your house? Inside the house, yes. All right. Um, is, does it interfere with your you, you going outside and using your property? Absolutely. I like to go out, cook out. Maybe have a beer on the, on the picnic table. Can't do that anymore. No. Not when they're running. When they're not running, though, the smell goes away? Yeah. All right. Okay. Any questions? No, we're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There's one more that uh, came in a little bit later. I don't know if you responded, uh, Dave Butcher. He uh, you just left. Just left. He had, he had a very very soft. Yeah. All right. So, huh. right now. Could, could I address? You more? can, but you need to be sworn in. That's fine.
Sir, can you put your right hand in the air? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. You've been sworn. Uh, my name is Ben Smith. I live at 161 Lawson Avenue, which is the, the last house on Lawson Avenue, approximately 1,500 feet from the old asphalt plant. Now, when that was operational, occasionally, if we had the right conditions with the cloud ceiling and fog, you would see, as Bob had said, like a blue haze coming through the neighborhood. Now, historically, it usually goes over my house. The area that we're in is like a swale. So it goes over me, comes down around Deb's house, and goes out to Main Street. So depending on which way the wind is going, if you get a southern wind, it's worse. And, and just so the record, Chris is about 1,500 feet away from Deb's house in a straight line. <coughs> it's been going on for years. The biggest problem that I have is there is one phase from PJ Keating that's here today that was here when all this started. They sat here and they told us well, the, the people surrounding, especially the people out front. Now, it's not bothered. I don't have an issue right now with the smell or the dust because they're not, they're not operating. The smell isn't coming in a uh, <coughs> southeast direction of my house. Okay. Um, but they sat here and they said 90% of all the gases would be removed when the trucks are loading and that asphalt plant is operating. And it's part of the dust mitigation because they read that. I was also at PJ Keating for meetings. I had a group of people that we were meeting on a monthly basis with PJ Keating to go over to see what they can do to be better neighbors. And then when all the lawsuits and everything started happening, we just didn't want to get, get into it. I mean, I don't want to be involved in a lawsuit with Keating. I don't have anywhere near the money that they have. They're a business, I understand, eventually they're going to get to operate again. But they need to follow their rules. And that's the only question, the only issue I have. They have their liaison coming through the neighborhoods. I don't know how many people have been contacted by them. Some people warning them. I don't have a problem. I mean, you have to talk to these people as much as you don't want to. Because we have to resolve that they're not going, they're not going to go away, but they need to be good. They need to be held accountable to that dust mitigation plan. That's on the record as to what they told people was going to happen when they moved that asphalt plant to the front, even though they said they were going to look to put it in another location if they could, which we all knew that was a, basically wasn't going to happen. So, I mean, I, like I said, I've lived there for 40 years. <clears throat> Warren Brothers, an excellent neighbor. They got a little way. It's, it's like as the hole gets bigger, the problems get bigger. Uh, Tilcon took it over. We had, I think it was 1,500 pounds of rock that came over. Uh, Mr. Butcher that left, one went right through his, his garage after it went through two fences. They were, Tilcon was right there. Yeah. The next thing I know, shortly after that, I don't, and I, I can't say for sure if this was PJ Keating that owned it, when it was right about the time of the switchover of ownership, I had a rock come in and take down my 12-foot dog pen. I drove from West Bridgewater and got home before anybody came over. Overall, at lunch. Sorry, when you send a 500-pound rock over that quarry, you better be there before I get and that's what I told you. I also had my house had inches of water in the salt because somebody from PJD went and blocked a 36 inch pipe that goes through to let, to let the natural stream out through to Main Street. Kevin, we need to stick to the old. So, I mean, that's the owners, the owners and all that. They just need to be made stick. My main point is they need to be made stick to the, the, the mitigation plan that they propose. That's it. I have no more. Any questions? Mr. Lazier? No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. He has an opportunity. I think we're done.
job with our kids. He has the opportunity to present the case. I see that we've heard from all the residents that wish to speak. Um, allow Mr. Legere to uh, mention whatever he needs to speak about with your case. If you want to come up with a podium, that would be best. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, before, before I get started in earnest here, I am going to want to ask a few questions of a couple of the PJP employees who are here this evening. Um, how would you like me to handle that? I can... Uh, have they moved forward? Yes, they all stood up. I start. Every day all. But he wants to know, logistically, <coughs> where do they stand? How does he do it? Uh, they're going to have to answer from the Zeno, right? You can stand if he asks you, you a question, just stand. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Doug Vigno. I'm the Environmental Compliance Manager for PJ Keeney. And, you know, just quite simply, um, we do have our air permit for the HMA plant. It also includes the aggregate plant as well. It encompasses the entirety of the, the, uh, the site. Um, we have best available control technology. It's the, um, it, it's the, Strictest uh, permit the DEP has ever issued for hot asphalt plants. So, um, you know, that's where we're at with that right now. We're in uh, talks with, with DEP. We keep them appraised of the situation. Um, and, you know, we, as you say, we, it, it hasn't been operating at, at full uh, capacity. Uh, we don't have the ability to do that right now. Um, but we do have strict compliance. Uh, as far as our monitoring is concerned, um, you couldn't conceivably see fumes go through a neighborhood. Um, as was stated, uh, we have opacity requirements, and you just you don't see it. Um, so that's all I have to add. Thank you, Mr. Just a, a couple of quick questions just to put a finer point on this thing. Um, you mentioned that you have the PJ King has received a permit from DEP. That's the air quality permit that was issued in 2021. That's the comprehensive air plan approval permit. It took about 16 months to acquire. And that covers the HMA plant as well as the entire facility. The entire facility. They added in the aggregate plant as well uh, for PM10. We haven't operated the aggregate plant, uh, but we've uh, invested millions and millions of dollars in uh, shrouding uh, our, uh, crushers, our screens, our conveyor belts. Um, and that's to uh, tamp down dust as well as noise on the, on the property as well. Okay. And the, you mentioned best available control technology. Um, is one of the purposes for that technology to mitigate odor from an engine? Uh, we're required to add an additive into the uh, asphalt cement that we receive. And so we do that um, every day, every, every time we get a load. Um, so that, that is added, it's a requirement of the permit. And uh, when I say best available control technology, the way DEP works is this. For the preceding air permit that they do for a light facility, the next permit that they issue has to have better controls on it than the previous hot mix asphalt plant that they permitted. So it's a progressive chain. The next person or company that goes for an HMA um, their permit will have to go above and beyond what we did for best available control technology, if, if it's possible to do so. Um, but I can uh, safely say that um, our permit is the strictest permit in Massachusetts. Okay, thank you. And just a final point. Uh, did you hear testimony earlier from Mr. D'Souza, I think, that he could see the emissions coming across his property? Yes, that's what I alluded to earlier. Um, you would not see emissions from the HMA plan. We're required to meet opacity uh, requirements. Opacity, it's called EPA Method 9. And you have to um, look at the stack on a regular basis. We do this daily. And we take opacity readings. Our, um, the folks who do it are certified Method 9 under EPA. And they have to take those readings. What you're seeing coming up out of the it's steam. It's that steam. That steam dissipates, and you would not see blue smoke or steam. What you know, 
lap wafting through a, a, a neighborhood. You wouldn't see that. Um, so that is just, you know, it, it just can't happen. It doesn't happen. Thank you. I have nothing question through him? No, you can ask him a question directly. As a part of the uh, DEP permit that was issued, how often does DEP inspect the facility during the course of a normal year? Well, uh, DEP uh, has certain requirements that we have to do as far as maintenance logs, um, and they can come and inspect uh, at any time. Um, and uh, they're, they're free to do so. They can look at our records. We have daily inspection records. Um, we have uh, our bag house where we have to keep track of air pressure drops and things of that nature. Um, so all of those records are there. How often they come is entirely up to them. Um, you know, they've heard several times from, um, you know, uh, I can guarantee you, um, from someone on the board here, or, uh, let, let me rephrase the question. I don't think that was clear. Um, let's just say over the last five years, how many times has the EP visited the site as a normal inspection of, of the property? Well, over the past five years. Uh, well, being followed by the town. Uh, very few, few times because we weren't operating. So what was it to expect? You, you haven't operated the facility in five years? Uh, the last uh, blasting permit we received was October of 2020. So the aggregate plant hasn't operated since then. And then of course we went through the elongated process of getting our HMA permit. And that, uh, we started that up in September of last year. So let's start back. Prior to the new asphalt plant, uh, when the other one was operational, how often does DEP show up at that site on any given year, voluntarily? DEP shows up when they d deem it. Can somebody answer the question? Yeah. I'm answering the question, sir. No, DEP no. shows up on their own accord. So you, you have no knowledge? Do they come in and, and drop in from a helicopter and sneak around the facility? Oh, we would know. Yeah. I'm asking a question. Do they show up twice a year? Do they not show up once every five years? It's a, just a straight up question. Does anybody know? Well, I, uh, Rick Fable, DJ Heating. I think I recall a conversation with uh, Pat Hannon. He actually said he was out in the neighborhood with DEP. Is that correct? Is that about fair statement? That DEP, you had called DEP, you were circling the neighborhood, and you had a uh, submission came in, you and the DEP person, the representative went out to, see, to investigate, and you told me that there was no odor. Can you tell me that doesn't, that doesn't help their case? Is that a fair statement? No, I'm asking you. I need to push your question me. through the chair. The, 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 the question, the question is, is I still haven't had my question answered. Oh, sorry. It's, it's very simple. Okay? I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example so I can clarify it. This board issues uh, uh, permits on an annual basis to restaurants. They can pretty much expect two inspections a year of their restaurant. Unexpected. How many unexpected? Inspections does the DEP or has the DEP done for the facility for the asphalt plant only for the 10 years prior to the new plant being up and running? Well, I haven't been there for 10 years, I've been there th for three, uh, the majority of which was COVID, the majority of which we weren't operating. Then you're not, you're not in a place to speak since you weren't there. Has anybody been there? I think the question should be directed to DEP. We don't have any control of we well, don't have any control. the question to PJ Keating, I'm going to direct this question. It's when was the last time, my mistake, when Mr. Hannon contacted DEP? When was the last time DEP entered the facility since that was a new, you know, where you have the new plant? Have, have they been there? Have not. Have not. That's, that's right. So clarify. I didn't think so. To, to clarify, just to wow. clarify, so my name is Derek Hill, and I'm the president of BJ. To clarify your the comment, then, so since the asphalt plant was put in the, uh, on the front side of the property, so when we began to operate in September of 21, there has been no unannounced inspection 
uh, by DEP air resources on the property. Right? They do not typically uh, air resources, Mine Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA Occupational Safety and Health Administration. They uh, come onto properties in the industry unannounced. They, we don't know, but when they're there. So since 21, where the new asphalt plan went into operation, we have not had an unannounced uh, visit by Air Resources. Have you had an announced visit from Air Resources? Uh, no, no, no. So, so, so they, they haven't been there since 21? Unless, but, um, the only time we know is what Mr. Pago just stated, yeah. which Mr. Hannon stated, he had somebody out with them and they were doing an odor inspection. So you're saying what I've said, but I haven't agreed. So please don't put those words in my mouth. So well, Mr. Hannon asked if well, we'll, this is the we, 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 We've got a transcript, so yeah. we'll, we'll be able to figure out what was said. But, but I got a couple more questions for you. Yes, um, with respect, you heard the, the, you've heard the complaints, right? Yes. And I, I think it was a pretty powerful testimony. Are, are you saying that, that there isn't an odor coming out of that plant? I, I never said that. I'm, I'm asking, are you saying that? I never said that. So you would you admit that there's an odor that emanates from the plant? Asphalt, oh. asphalt plants emanate odors. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so, so does, you've, you've had your driveway paved, you can smell it. You've had, you know. I mean, the, the asphalt has a smell to it. All right, and, and, and does it cause people's eyes to water? No, no. We have, we've, we've submitted to the board a number of studies that they can research. It does not cause that. We have people on the ground eight hours a day. We have all our haulers. What None of them the people complain. on the ground eight hours a day? None of them complain. No, so you're just saying workers don't complain. And their workers. workers don't have watery eyes. They don't. They don't have nausea. They don't have headaches. And they're right there. Okay. All right. Now, with respect to the trucks, you heard some of these residents talking about the the, the contractors, the the the, the tarps on the trucks really aren't doing the job that they're meant to do. Are you familiar? Yeah. Do you have any comment with respect to that? Um, we we would qualify them to put a, uh, a tarp on it. Uh, DOT requires that they be tarped. Uh, so that's up to the individual. Uh, well, 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 you know, and, and yeah. it's not necessarily up to the individual. You're selling them a product. They have to and be covered before they leave the product. And, and, and do you inspect and make sure those covers are adequate? We do. We have cameras. So the residents saying they're not adequate, you're saying that they are? I say that they are, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're adequate for what they're required to do. So and that's to cover the material. All right, so have you looked over, did you recently look over the cameras? Did I recently look over the cameras? Yeah. No, no, so the guys at the plant looked over the cameras. Right, and did you talk to them? Yes. When did you talk to them? Uh, we talked to a uh, uh, regular basis. It's well, an absolute awesome. requirement. Uh, let's see, I talked to Claudio on probably last Thursday. Is Claudio here? Carl, Carl. Claudio is not here, but Carl. Carl, did you, you look over the uh, the cameras every day? Every day, every day. And you look over every single truck. Every, no, not every single truck, but most of the trucks that come in and out go right by my office. And uh, if, if they don't have a tarp, they do not leave the property. But if, but if they have a tarp, they can have any tarp. Is it, is, what, what happens if it just slides in the bridge? You heard some of these people talk about if they had a tarp that that, that goes down on front and back. Seems to help. They do make they make all different types of tarps. Sure. Is that a requirement that you guys have that they have those kind of tarps? Those be covered. But but you don't require that they can they can be loose and they can flop in it. And what I'm what I'm driving at here is, is I do a lot of permitting site assignments. And a lot of the a lot of the, the one of the big complaints is garbage flying out of trucks. And the operators of the, of, the, of the facilities would say, no, we're sorry, those are independent contractors. Well, we, we, we devised a way where we required you guys to do regulations and say, you want, to, you want to be able to haul out of here, you have a certain tarp on your truck. And if you're found not to have a tarp on the truck, you get, you, you know, you're not allowed to haul for a week. You get found twice, you're not allowed to haul for a month. You get found three times, you're not allowed to come into our facility. Do you have anything like that? We do not. Have you looked into that? No. All right. And are you familiar with the, and I don't know if it's 
for, for it's probably for Mr. Nino. Are you familiar with outfits out there that will actually uh, monitor odors? They send. I just like to answer these questions. Are you kidding? Sure. So again, Jared, no. Can I just get stop it for a moment? I have to get my mic. Bring it over here. It's just crazy. It's really hard to hear. This way with it. So if I could address the question, first of all, you know, awareness is probably the most important piece. And Can you just identify yourself? Sure. Okay. My name is Derek Hill. I'm the president of BJT. Um, our higher hauler agreements have a requirement in them or that the tarps are DOT specified. However, tonight, the, 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 the people here have raised an issue that I think warrants us to do a, a more thorough inspection of our higher haulers. And, and for, for, for the properly functioning tarps. And we'll, t we'll take that on and we'll report back to the board. That's just, that to me is just a simple, a simple ask. You create awareness on it, we're gonna take action and we'll get back to the board. But we'll inspect those vehicles um, and, we, and the ones that don't, aren't properly functioning, we will, we will give them notice and that they need to replace their tarps. Um, but we are required, so on the mass DOT jobs, our, our, on our jobs, we are required, and oftentimes inspectors on the jobs or at the plant, if the, if the tarp is deemed unsatisfactory, they will, they will ask the contractor, not just PJ Keating, but a contractor in the state, to have the truck removed from the job and the tarp replaced until it's satisfactory. So we can easily do that, and we can put that in place. Immediately. Right. So, you, you, you sat in the little Sure. You, you sat through Mr. Vino, who says, doesn't smell at all. No, nobody's eyes are watering, nobody's throats. No, not a big deal. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff, uh, Jeff, that's, that's the not Sanders what motor. Said at all. That's, yeah. that's, that's so he, he, he said that asphalt stinks, but the eyes don't water, the nose doesn't no. burn, or anything like that. But I, the, the, the record will just stink. Said, well, the said. record will show. So, so my, my question is this. You got the residents over here who claim that, that it, so what we have is, he says the odor's not that bad. They say it's horrible. There are third parties out there that, that are retained to do just this. And that is in the, in the context of a, of a transfer station or a landfill where they come in and there's a portal that these folks go to. They have a beeper or whatever and they're typically dispatched, I think it's within an hour or two. And then they make a report. They do the sniff, one through seven, and they make the report. Is that something that you guys have looked into or, or willing to look into? Uh, to answer the first part of that question, we have not looked into that, but I think that, you know, that certainly the testimony tonight is, open, uh, is enlightening. And we are open to looking at all legitimate claims, and, and there's been several claims that are concerning and we need to we need to look into that. Now we also need to look at what is an objective third party and I think that we would be able to resolve what that is between um, PJ Keating and council and the council for Keating, the council for the town and, and members of the board, right? That we can find what would be an objective third party and, 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 and go in and do this objective view of odor a nuisance odor I think that right that's because that's the crux of tonight's conversation that's is right. nuisance odor so you know if we stated that piece then then yes I think we, you know we're, we have to be open to those things I have a further question Mr. I'm sorry I didn't hear you may I ask a question of course um, Derek I'm going to ask you the question that you seem like you give me a straight answer. Um, is there an industry established radius where all, nearly all odors dissipate from the facility? Like everything flows through the air and eventually it just dissipates. Is there an established radius from a plant? You know, I've, I've read some things. I'd like to respond back with, with say, you know, independent testimonies. The National Asphalt Paving Association and Industry Association has, uh, which Keating and many manufacturers are members of, has its has its documents and studies. 
but there are also independent government agencies that also have studies, and I'd like to think that what we do is we synthesize some of that to provide all the documents, but synthesize some of that information down to, you know, terms that, you know, one, it isn't a 68-page document, it gives you something very quick, down and dirty, around the height of the stack, the radius, um, you know, a lot of things that everyone has brought up today. Certainly, we all know, you know, whether barometric pressure, wind, all of those things have an effect, um, not just on our industrial processing, but, you know, all kinds of industrial processing. So. Um, let me let us get something to the board on that, uh, and we we'll obviously will we'll expedite those 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 findings. But those findings will basically be on you know what we know from industry, what we you know, and, and that might also be some supporting documentation that we have from air resources. And the next question: Was there any consideration of making the stacks higher to get everything above people? So that's a great question. Um, and you know, often and, and DEP does an air modeling study when we move when we do the plant, right? So we, you know, so they kind of specify the height. Um, there certainly is something, you know, as we look at all these things. I think you know we are open to making sure that we're implementing the best available control technology in the industry uh, on this plant. Um, it's one of the newest asphalt plants. It's made by Aztec. Aztec is a, an American company in Tennessee. It's the leading uh, manufacturer of hot mix asphalt plants. Um, so we will work closely with them. We've actually will have the rep out. Um, that will be something we'll look at um, because obviously the height of the stack could help uh, with some of the issues that were brought up about the valley and, and the fogs. We'll, we'll certainly look at those things. But anything we do when it comes to the asphalt plant or uh, making modifications, we have to go back uh, to air resources to get a permit. So, so we'll look at we'll, we'll we will look at that. The other thing that's important to understand is um, we understand temperature. So, um, temperature is also a key factor, and uh, we use the we use a, a warm mix additive, and a, we have a warm mix asphalt kit. Um, so we're making we're, we're manufacturing hot mix down around two. The desired temperature would really be about 285 degrees. So. You know, if you start bringing asphalt up to 320, you start cooking it and you do burn things off, right? So, you know, it's, it's kind of like your bad furnace, right? Um, our asphalt plant is run on natural gas. It, it is <coughs> one of the cleanest um, fossil fuels out there. So uh, our burner is run on natural gas and that's, uh, we tune that annually, okay? And that's part of, part of the submissions we do um, and will be required to do a staff test when we can run the plant at full capacity. Um, which we can't run right now because we're not allowed to use our asphalt tanks. <laughs> I, have, I have a question, Chair. Go ahead. Um, just to you, Mr. Hill. Um, you know, Mr. Vinu had said that basically there's steam that's coming out of the stack. Um, you know, it's essentially a dryer. I get that. I and mean, also looking at the air permit, there's some VOCs. But we're talking about odor here as a nuisance, and is that odor coming out of the stack, or is it coming out of um, you know the, the the actual fact that the trucks are being loaded? Um, that that that's my question. Uh, it's a great question, um, and I would say that you know there there could be a, a small source of odor through the stack and through through the bag house, but everything in the bag house, Carl, how many bags are in there? Is there it's, they're a giant filter tube, but there's, you know, 800 bags, well, probably 800 bags. Yeah, 1,400. 1,400. Thanks, over 1,000, yeah. So, and then the blue smoke kit also has a set of bags that we go through into that. So all of that, you know, once the process of, of making hot mix asphalt is we're drying the aggregate, well, the aggregate has a certain amount of moisture, that creates the, st the steam plume. There is a, an evaporate, there's an, a source extraction kit on the drum of the plant that takes all of the air, st steam, any particular dust, runs it through the bag house, then there's a blower that brings it up and pushes it out the stack. So, um, so there could be some odor that comes through it that way, but we're not burning the asphalt cement. It's the lowest end of a crude, and we're burning, you know, so we're blending that in at 285 degrees. So the other source of a emission Right or a fume odor is coming from the transfer from our silos into the trucks. 
and we'll look at that. And um, you know, there are other options we'll look at for uh, best available control technology around the asphalt plant. Um, you know, traveling to Europe, CRH, publicly traded company. Um, I've been in Europe several times, and in high urban areas in Amsterdam, they actually have a series of garage doors. So the doors come down the uh, the asphalt plant. The, the truck is loaded in back. Uh, everything is patched and um, and and, uh, and 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 it is captured that way. So those are things that we'll look at. Um, we'll certainly come back to the board uh, with those as well. But but I, I do think we're we're looking at all of the things that we can do, uh, and we want to be very responsive to the neighborhood and the and the community about about this odor odor issue. Right? We, but we we do know that just like making coffee, just like a barbecue. Uh, there is an odor there. Someone smoking marijuana, there is an odor there, right? So all of those things happen. The real question is, uh, what else is there? So we, we've provided supporting documentation. A lot of it so far is, is around what we get from independent agencies and associations. So we, we'll have that, and but we'll come back with additional information around the modeling and, and uh, you know the dissipation of odor. Um, in a control department. Mr. Madeira, Mr. Hill, are you guys, oh, I'm sorry. Is, uh, is Keating going to put any doors in those silos where you, where you load up the truck? I we are looking at that right now. I was informed a while back that you guys were looking at doors to keep the smoke inside. That's correct. That way you Blue, blue gases can be absorbed into your bag houses. That's correct. That is true. We're, that is true. We are we are investigating that as we speak. Well, that'll help out some of the some of the smell, and you know that yeah. that'll eliminate some of the smell that's leaving the plant. Uh, yeah, we capture the transfer between the discharge of the silo into the truck, right? That's right. Well, that's I'm, happy, that. I'm, I'm happy that PJ Keating sent a president down. Because we could never get the president from PJ Keys to come down and talk to the people. Oh, thank so he you. asked for him at many meetings, and uh, I can say the name Jonathan also would never come down. Uh, and these people wanted to see the president of the corporation come down and give them an answer, and they could not give an answer because they're going through third parties. I'm happy that you, as the new president, coming in to see these people and explain to them and talk to them. Thank you. Really, Thank you for the that would have that would have solved a lot of problems with these people here. A long time. Complaining. Yeah. If Mr. Olson came down, <clears throat> I know the man, but the thing is, I'm happy that you, Mr. Hill, is down here, and I hope that you attend more meetings for PJ Keating in front of these people and give them an answer, because you're the only guy that can give them an answer, because none of those fellows over there can give an answer except for you, you Chief Poncho. You're like the chief of the Indians. So, as far as I'm concerned, if you come down, these people will listen to you. Maybe you can help them out more than what was being helped out before. I really appreciate you coming in. Well, thank you. Mr. Legier? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just some brief comments to yes. try to... You had to stand up for a question before you... I'm sorry, are you speaking through the chair? I didn't, or? I didn't see I, I, I'm, I'm just before we get into another answer. discussion, I do have some questions based on what Mr. Turge and Mr. Vigno had to say. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big on words. Everybody's under oath here tonight. And I think that some people are too quick to ask to answer questions and, and may make a mistake. Um, so I just want to clear a few things up. Mr. Turge, and you um, testified that. Um, you don't see any smoke coming off the trucks, that uh, the trucks actually drive by your office going in and going out. That was what I heard you say. They, no, they come in, they drive by the office coming in. And that's what I'm trying to clear up. You said in and out. No, in. So when they drive in, you see them, but they're empty. There's no asphalt in them, there's no smoke coming out right. of them. But when they get loaded in, in, the, in the loading bay, they leave through the LNS driveway 
in, in your office is on the complete other side of the building by the scale house. That is correct. You have no view of those trucks leaving. Oh, absolutely I do because I spent half my time outside at the plant itself walking the facility. Really? Most, most of the day. Yeah. Okay. So you said you saw them drive by your office in and out. I just wanted to clear that up. Then, uh, Mr. Vigno, you stated that um, PJ Keating has the most comprehensive air permit um, and the strictest one in the state of Massachusetts. Can you, can you point out any of the parts of that permit that are stricter or, or the most comprehensive? Uh, no, I can only tell you that uh, DEP policy, I don't know all the other permits. Uh, the DEP policy is best available in control technology, which again, the definition of that is, is that whatever preceding... I know that's not what I asked you. I asked you, do you know? Do you, can you point to me how your permit is the strictest permit in the state? That was your statement on the road. Yes, I can. We can get back to you on that. Okay, but you don't know that standing here today. I, I, there's a lot of okay. requirements of that permit. I'm fine with that. And then um, you stated that you have uh, employees that do daily stock, stock stack monitoring and have been trained in EPA Method 9. Can you give us the names of those employees that are trained in EPA Method 9? Can you give us those names tonight? Um, or can someone from PJ Keating have all managed? Well, I have been. Um, there's numerous uh, personnel that have been trained. You guys always say there's numerous people, but you never tell us who. You're not on site every day, okay. so it's not you. You no, not on site every, every day. But I can also tell you that uh, we hire a company called ETG that does opacity. You, you well. testified under oath that you have employees that work there daily and do daily stock stack monitoring in accordance with EPA Method 9. What are their names? I can answer that question. Great. Lenny Katojo. Hold on. Can you, can you spell it for the... Yep, L-E-N-N-Y-C-O-T-O-J-O. -O -O. Claudio Mocha. You didn't go, right? There's at least three of us, me and myself included, uh, attended. If you would just give us the names. Carl Turgeon. We're required to have one at the facility. We have three. Who's the third person? Me. I heard you. Just needed three names. I didn't hear the third name. Who was it? Lenny, Claudio, and yeah. myself. Okay, so Lenny. Lenny. I thought it was Lenny Claudio. Yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. And then, um, Mr. Vigno, you stated in the road that you keep in touch with DEP uh, about the issues at the plant. Can you tell me who at DEP you keep in touch with? Uh, Thomas Hanna. We just sent a letter in two weeks ago to Mr. Hanna to tell him uh, where we're at with the plant, that it's not operating full capacity, and that once it is, then. Um, we basically were telling DP that um, the stack testing, that we couldn't stack test at 80 to 90 percent of... Um, I just asked you who you got in contact with. I didn't ask you for all those details. So, well, was there. okay, so you did you send them a letter one time? Is that keeping in touch? Or have you sent numerous letters since the plan started operating in September 2020? We have a professional consultant, ETG, Chris Gibbons. And I work with her through them to be in contact with DEP. We also have been in contact with DEP on numerous occasions with the former DEP commissioner that we hired to, to, to work with DEP. Um, and, you know, typically DEP wants to talk to professional experts. And with that new Air knowledge? Air, air model. Bob knowledge. Bob Commissioner Knowledge, yes. Former commissioner now of lobbyists. <coughs> right? Yep, okay. Um, then, you uh, under oath mentioned the opacity readings and um, when, they, when the work is being done, they're being monitored. Who, who's training the opacity and who does that at the facility daily? I'm trained in it. I don't do it daily. Uh, yep. the Claudio or Lenny. Okay. And it's logged every day. And um, I don't know who testified that you can't see fumes. But when I sat outside the loading bay um, and the truck was sticking out of the loading bay, you do see fumes. And when I spoke to the Keating inspector that I was with, he told me that it was steam. And, and steam isn't blue. And you guys can smile and, and I, do no, that's you want. The answer to the it's question. It's a serious it's question. The, the, so the, what I stated was that you would not see fumes going through the neighborhood, as was said by 
one, one of the folks who got it the boat. Okay, so that's only for the neighborhood, not for coming off of the trucks. No, when you're immediately there, you can you can see. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, best available control technologies. Have you prior to you know Mr. Hill talking about looking into canvases? Had you considered best available control technologies for the trucks hauling asphalt? Because you're using trucks that haul dirt, stone, um, so just a general purpose cover. Um. The DEP uh, air permit requires that the loads be covered. They don't have a specific, specific uh, you know, what type of material they need to be covered with, yep. but that's in the air permit. Um, so it's up to them to determine what's best available control technology. They determine that covering the loads apparently falls under that category. Okay, and then you testified that um, there's an additive that's added to the um, asphalt cement. Is that added at PJ Keating? No, it's added, it's added from the source of the asphalt cement. Okay, and, and is that added in EcoSor? I think it's EcoSor, correct? Yeah, correct. Sure. And then, and, um, the, and the bill of lading states it right on it that it was added. Actually, I, I verified on an inspection. I verified through the bill of lading on the transport driver that there was an additive added at the terminal. It wasn't EcoSor, but there was an additive. Cyclotherm. I don't. I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't EcoSor. Mm -hmm. um, I just remember that. And then um, you were you were testifying about emissions from the plant. And um, you folks made a bit of a joke that you couldn't use the um, liquid asphalt tanks yet. But my understanding is your application was rejected because it didn't fill it out correctly. Um, that's another story. Well, we, we didn't make a joke. People laughed. We didn't. Okay. Nothing so, funny about it. Well, I was there doing the inspection um, of the liquid asphalt tanker um, bypassing the asphalt tanks. Mm -hmm. And in reviewing your air permit, there are blue smoke devices on the top of the asphalt, liquid asphalt tanks. Just condensers. Condensers for odor. Condensers to, uh, it also uh, eliminates the amount of water that's in the mix. Yep, and, and a byproduct of the, of the asphalt tanks is hydrogen sulfide, H2S. And I, you guys made me take a deep dive into this whole asphalt plant thing. So. My read is that the asphalt tanks generate um, hydrogen sulfide, which is lethal. Um, and that special care needs to be taken when you service the tank. So when I saw the, the tanker bypassing the liquid asphalt tanks that have air control devices required in your permit, I asked the truck driver, does your tanker have any emission control devices on it for venting? And he said, no, it just vents to the air. Is that a source of, of odor because you're bypassing the system that was designed to, no, to control this stuff? It, it will always be that way. The, the, the intention is that when we get to use the AC tanks, that they have the ability to, to do that. But the direct offload is the direct offload, just as you would see at a Shell gas station. But it's venting into the atmosphere rather than going through <coughs> the controls on the top it, of the it, tank. It's a direct feed, so. But the I tanker itself, the tanker itself, it's heated. It would build pressure if it wasn't vented. It's vented openly to the atmosphere. There are no emissions control devices. Okay. Um, has the air permit required um, a third party stack test after the plant operated for so many days? I believe that, that, that you've met those days. Has the third party uh, stack inspection been done? No, as I stated, we sent in a letter to DEP to tell them what the operational um, process has been since September of uh, 21. And um, DEP has, does not do a stack test when you're operating at 30% of the cap capacity of the plant. If they want to, they can come out and do that. We offer that, they can do it, but DEP doesn't feel as though that's a true reading of what the emissions would be if you were operating a full capacity. Well, actually, my reading of the permit was that you were required to do it by a mandatory date, and you had to run the plant at 100% capacity to do the test. It wasn't that they would wait until you were at 100% capacity. We can't capacity. run the Please, plant. don't interrupt me. She's, she's taking notes here. In your, in your permit, 
it says that you will do a stack test to a third party, not through DEP. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's within 90 days of initial operation. 180, I believe. So and I believe 90. And again. Okay, but the, the point of the, the point is that when you, you can't run the plant at its capacity, that DEP is not interested in looking at it. They'll say, listen, we're not going to come out and do a stack test if you can only run at 30% capacity. That's just the way they do it. If you, they want it running at 85 to 90% minimum. We can't run the plant at 85 to 90% minimum because we can't use our AC tanks in order to do that. So we can only make a very small amount of mix at the plant right now in comparison to its ability to produce 450 tons per hour. Have you considered not operating until you can operate in accordance with the apartment? Uh, I suggest that you contact the EDP if that's your concern. Okay. That's just a question. And then, um, when and how much longer should the town endure the earlier? While you work it out and you look into things and you look into the distances, I've been hearing this for two years. So, um, July 1st, 2022 is my second year of um, looking into Keating. This is a very familiar chant of we're looking into it, we're going to try and buy one, we're going to order one. Well, we have to operate. You folks are the masters of delay when it comes to coming into compliance. The, the plant hasn't operated for a year, so it would be impossible for you to say that it's been two years. Right. No, since, <laughs> since I've been dealing with trying to get you into compliance. Yes. All right, I'm going to just go along with that. Um, Mr. Legier. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm not sure if this is working. Hopefully, you can hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully, I can get through my comments this time without interruption. Um, so, just to bring this back, I'll try to be relatively brief because we've had uh, a long evening, um, particularly the last few minutes here. Um, I just want to remind the board sort of the context of this hearing that we're here tonight. And we're here talking about an order dealing with alleged nuisance owner. And you heard from town council right off the top that really the ultimate question for the board is whether the odors um, that may be emanating or allegedly emanating from the Keating property are injurious to the public. Right? Um, and the courts have looked at issues around nuisance odors, not surprisingly, over the years. And I've cited some cases in a letter that I submitted to the board which provide a framework that should help us understand when it is that an odor rises to the level of a nuisance odor. And the courts have made pretty clear that when you're talking about nuisance odor, there's a number of factors you look at, um, the character of the neighborhood. And let me just pause there, because one thing that hasn't been mentioned once this evening is the fact that PJ Heating's property is located in an industrial industrially zoned district is a legal industrial operation under your town's zoning body. And I think that's a really important thing to keep in mind. They comply with all of the setback requirements within that zoning district and everything else under your zoning bylaws. It's why they got a building permit and a certificate of completion after the plant was built in its current location. Courts also tell us to take a look at the acts complaint. Is it legal? Is it illegal? As I just said, the operation of that HMA plant is in a, an industrial zone parcel of land. It has its permit from MassDEP. It's a legal facility and operation on that property. <coughs> Finally, we look at the effects of health on the public, and that's what town council was alluding to earlier. And the, court, and the Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts has looked at this issue even more specifically, and I think more relevant to our consideration of this issue here tonight, in the, issue, in the uh, context of industrial uses. Okay, so all those three factors I just mentioned, certainly applicable. But when you're talking about an industrial use, the Supreme Judicial Court has told us you look at a few factors. You look at whether the landowner is complying with its permits. And as we've discussed here tonight, Keating has received an air quality permit from MassDEP that was just last year, 2021. It was recent. This isn't a 20 year old permit. DEP has taken a close look at this and determined that. Heating's facility complies with all state and federal air quality standards and regulations. Is there evidence of negligence on behalf of the landowner? I haven't heard any evidence of negligence here this evening. 
We've heard from neighbors who have talked about the odors that they get when the wind blows the wrong way. We've heard from neighbors who talk about odors when trucks drive by. But nothing to, to suggest that heating is operating its plant in a negligent manner. And then finally, is there any evidence of negative health impacts? And again, that goes back to town councils for the initial comments. And certainly those health impacts, as we can all appreciate, are really important. It's what really you're here for as the Board of Health. And it's what courts are very curious to see when we're talking about a nuisance. Is this going to harm the health of the public? We have submitted to the board in our letter as attachments studies from a number of federal and state agencies that have looked closely at exactly this type of facility and found absolutely no evidence of any negative health impacts from the emissions associated with an agent. The Federal Environmental Protection Agency, one of those. Um, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Sur Services Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry is another we've provided for you. California State Environmental Protection Agency, as well as a private engineering firm, Stanford Head Associates. So the answer to that final question is that based on everything we know in terms of scientific evidence, there is no evidence that there are any negative impacts from a facility like this. And we heard Mr. Hennon a moment ago mentioned hydrogen sulfide. That was one of the compounds studied. You can look at the papers we've provided. It's very clear that that's been looked at carefully. And the bottom line is, emissions from facilities like Keating's plant have far less impacts in terms of emissions than things like a wood stove. And I mean far less. Okay, so if you're heating your home with a wood stove, you're going to be probably breathing in stuff that's a heck of a lot worse than what you'd be receiving a thousand feet away from the heating facility. So again, the plant is operating in compliance with zoning. It's operating in compliance with its permits. We've, again, heard from heating employees who work at this facility and others like it. They don't experience the same types of ill effects that we've heard some of the neighbors comment on here today. And, you know, the, the Supreme Judicial Court, in looking at this issue of nuisance odors allegedly generated by an industrial use, has recognized what is sort of a hard reality for a lot of folks, which is that in a residential neighborhood adjacent to an industrial neighborhood or use, there are necessarily going to be odors and other negative effects of living in close proximity to an industrial use. And the fact that some of those effects, like odors here, may <coughs> impact certain sensitive people to a greater degree than others does not rise to the level of, of a nuisance, right? And if you look at one of the cases we've cited in our papers, the Straken case, which dealt with an oil refinery. And a group of neighbors <coughs> sued the oil refinery, arguing there was a nuisance associated with odors from that refinery. The impacts and the effects that those neighbors complained of are exactly the same ones we heard here tonight. Watering eyes, irritated nose, nausea, dizziness. And the court said that hearing from a few people with those impacts was not enough to establish a nuisance. And that's, again, exactly what we're facing here. And you've heard tonight from eight, I believe it was eight residents, um, one of whom, the last gentleman to speak, actually commented that you know, he doesn't smell anything. He doesn't have any effects of odor from the property. So we've really heard from seven folks here tonight who've testified that two, three, maybe four times a week, when the wind is blowing in the right direction, they get odors from the facility when it's in operation. Um, and again, those impacts from those odors that they described, dizziness, watering eyes, nausea, that's all right in line with what the Supreme Judicial Court has looked at and determined does not constitute a nuisance odor for a legally operating industrial use like a heating facility. So um, with that, I will uh, close my comments for the evening. I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'm certainly happy to do my best. Thank you, Mr. Legia. I just want to make it known to the record that the information that Mr. Legia is referring to as far as 
um, all of the things that he just mentioned. This was issued to me on Friday at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's like 200 pages of information. We gave P.J. Keating two weeks when they asked for it for an extension for the hearing. So I just wanted to go to record that we need to review all of this information to make some final decisions on what we're going to do. Tom, can I, can I make a comment on one of the statements, if I may? When it comes to the health, okay, all the studies have been done within PJ Keating. The town just started doing a study outside of the town with them being shut down. In the 400 feet between the last house on Lawson Avenue and Road Street, there are seven cases of cancer, myself included. There's two that are pretty serious now, stage four cancers that are out there. These people aren't going to come forward. This is part of the, the, the issue as well. You can say the odor and all this, it's the health of the neighborhood. PJ Keating workers go home after eight hours in the day. Most of them, and you called me a liar on this because I've seen it in there on the tours. They ride around, they ride around in sealed vehicles. The crusher is sealed. You may have guys that are walking around in the, within the yard. Yes, they do. But a lot of them are in areas where they're protected from the dust. That's what we want the study for. That's what we're concerned with, with PJ King, because we don't know. Why do we have three cancer centers in this area? Okay, that, that's what I'm looking at is the health of the neighborhood. And that's the biggest concern between the silica dust and the, the petroleum from the asphalt. They're toxic. Does your facility monitor for benzene that's a byproduct of asphalt? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you know, I'm on town council. At, at this point, I, I think that the property owner had requested to provide us with some additional information. Um, you had indicated that you have uh, I've received about 200, cop uh, 200 pages of, of documents before the weekend. Um, so I think that you have a couple of different options here right now. You could close the public participation portion of this and the evidential portion of this, but that wouldn't allow council to submit the, the evidence that, that he asked to submit. And I think you agree to submit it. Um, you could just not let them submit it and you can close everything and you can make a decision tonight or you can continue this hearing to a time and date certain so that you'll have an opportunity and whatever town consultant or, or peer reviewer would have an opportunity to review that information and council will also be able to submit additional information that he requested to submit. Um, I think those are your options and, and I don't know how you want to do it but those are your options. Yeah, what we're going to do now is we'll take everything under advisement. Well, what, what, what you're going to do is you're going to you're, you're going to continue this hearing right. to a time and date, sir. You're not advise, taking anything under advisement at this point, because right. you're going to allow additional information. <coughs> right. Yeah. Just make sure you don't clip the nearest home, which is Mr. Smith's, I think, but I'm not sure. And you just take that same circle 
and you slide it down to where the asphalt plant is now, you just encompassed like 150 homes. Mm -hmm. Now, if you took the same, did the same, uh, you know, uh, exercise, and you just drew a bigger circle, that would be about one and a half times the size I started with, and I clipped maybe a half a dozen eight homes on the end of Laura Keene, if I got the right street. Well, you move that cir well, circle well, down, well, well, now yeah. you've encompassed Slocum Street, all the way up to where some of these complaints are, all the way down to, uh, it's one of those streets, I know where it is, Mulberry, way off the beaten path from where it is now. And that, that's the key thing to the whole, the whole matter, as far as I'm concerned, is you took something back there and you moved it right up front. And I doubt the oil refinery case did that. I think that's, it just can't be ignored. And you know, as far as the court case, I read it, I saw it, you know, you have to get a smell once in a while, but I guarantee you, you would, dis you would not disagree with me that if you went home on any given day or you were retired and you want to go have a cup of coffee in your backyard and you can't do it four out of seven days, you'd find it a nuisance. Thank you. All right. Good. Take a motion to continue. Yeah. Do, we have do you to want to talk certain? about dates? I don't want to talk about so, dates. This is Jim. So prior to the meeting, I called the um, air expert, Dr. Martin, to have him review the submittal from uh, DJ King. And he is available to come back and uh, address the Board of Health on July 20th. That would be a Wednesday, um, July 20th. He needs a week and a half to review it, write his opinion on, on what they've submitted, find his own court cases and those things, and, and give us some professional advice rather than just listening to DJ Keene's opinion. So July 20th is when he's available, <coughs> if you want to continue to that. I, I think we're going to, we'll, we'll come up with a date. Okay. I, 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 would, I, I would prefer you did a date. No. You want to do a date? Yeah. yeah. If you have to continue it, you can continue it, but that will give them three weeks. How much time do you need to submit what you were going to submit to us? I would say at least end of next week, I think. Yeah, with the holiday, yeah. sort of hanging in there. Um, yeah, give us time. All right, so July 20th. We can, we can continue it if we need to. Uh, July 20th is a Wednesday. It's like three. What days is that? July 20th. I already know what's going on. Because it's here. All right, what day is you guys going to be here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. 
Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned.